When it seems there's no hope, and fear seems to be getting the upper hand, our work is to find a deeper support. One teacher of mine called it bigger hope. There's really no words to describe it. We try and some do a beautiful job. But empty hope, the craving for things to be different the way we want them to be, often just leads to more anxiety. The Amaryllis is where I find that deeper grounding. In 2003, I was alone in this house, engaged in a very painful process of losing my company and negotiating the, the forced outing of it. And Jane wasn't here. She was in Hawaii for that winter. Our dog had died. There was nothing alive in this house and it hurt so much and my mind started doing some crazy things I felt under attack true dis-ease with the moments audience gone alone and then I opened a room Jane's closet I hadn't been in it all winter and inside that closet was an amaryllis plant. And it had had no water, no attention from me. Yet all on its own, it had been growing all winter. And it was ready to bloom and I brought it down and put it on the mantle. And it blossomed, first two, and then I could witness the natural process of their dying. And two more came out of that same plant. I don't have words for that, but I can tell you that the amaryllis gives me grounding. It's what my teacher said, it's big hope. words, how we try to label it and describe it, only fail to capture this experience. But it's what pause gives us, and it's the gift in the given, to see this life and how precious it is. When I saw that amaryllis bloom, I could breathe in yes to the pain of the moment, to awareness, to knowing how to move more carefully to the next moment without making such a mess of things. I credit the gift moving through that time of uncertainty and lost audience to the amaryllis that had been forgotten about in the closet. And it's my deepest hope that you find yours.